Mayor Carpenter issued 10 host agreements with applicants for retail licenses to sell recreational marijuana. There is talk that they were not issued fairly. First, will those host agreements remain valid? Second, if more agreements are going to be issued, would you as mayor assure us that they will be issued fairly and please explain how? That's a tough one because I personally, I never approved of having pot shops in our city. So I don't know if, I think I'd have, I'd rather delegate it to a team that's less biased on the situation to work on, this, to work on that because I personally do not, uh, do not stand with having marijuana pot shops in our city. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan, 60 seconds. Uh, wait, no, no. I'm oh, sorry. You missed Derek. Oh, I missed Mr. Mr. Terrico. My apologies. Mr. Derrico, please. It's okay. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, I know somebody would find me. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and we get to that. Yes, uh, this is actually funny because, you know, this is a discussion that I had with Mayor Moses Rodriguez before I voted for him. And we got to whether or not he was going to open it. And I think, yes, he will, according to him. So with that being said, I think that at the beginning, there should have been a lottery. Lottery, you ask people to apply, put their name on a basket, and pull them out openly, as opposed to give 10 community hosts agreement without even you, the resident, know what was going on. And I think that movement was somewhat shallow. With that being said, I think that under my administration, what I will do, I will open it to everyone to bring transparency, equity, and also accountability. And I'm safe to say that I think Mayor, Ro Mayor Moses Rodriguez will do the same. So I think it's amazing to understand that process, but I wish I had the time to actually talk about how the Ordinance Committee, which drafted the proposal that was presented to us March 19, 2018. We do not have the time, folks, to actually yeah. go through it. But what I can tell you is that as we speak, I think we are at a better position where some of the folks who didn't think they would be participating in it will be able to have access to, and hopefully some of them will have that opportunity Thank to apply you. for it. And I think that we are moving forward Thank in a positive way. Thank you. Jimmy. Thank you. That concludes our debate questions, but each candidate has one more question that's going to serve as their closing statement. They will each have two minutes. <laughs> Ms. Martellis, you're first. You talk passionately about education and Brockton educational system, our failure to significantly make it better. What kind of educational policy would you implement as mayor of our city to make fundamental changes? First, I'd make sure that the No Child Left Behind, Behind Act is being implemented in every form, at, in academically, athletically, in every way in our system. I'd make sure that we have more after school programs, that our kids are getting the help that they need. I would just make sure that uh, we evaluate these kids and their learning styles because these kids, a lot, first, they're failing. They're, a lot of them are failing, and it's not because they don't have the capacity to do it. It's because we, we don't have enough teachers to accommodate them. So we need to, we fired 82 teachers last year, and uh, because we went into a $16 million deficit, the money is not being allocated the right way. First, I'll make sure that the money is being allocated the right way. And aside from funding, we need to look at the things that we can do to fix the school system. Like, for instance, ADHD students, for them to get longer test taking times. I spoke to a mother. Her, her son had to repeat the sixth grade because he didn't get longer test taking time, although she was told at the beginning of the year that he would get longer test taking time. And who has to pay for that? The, who has to pay for summer school? The mother does. She, and, she, and, it's still, and it's still a problem. You have all these things that are going on in the education system, like, for instance, special needs kids not having access to the music department when it's proven that special needs kids excel with music. When you have some of them that are graduating after four years when, without knowing their alphabet, we need to create better programs for these students. We need to create better policies to push that edu edu the education system will get better. Again, the, these. Our, these students, our kids, they're our future. They're the upcoming generations that are gonna have to live through our decisions. I'm over here fighting so that Brockton can be better in the long run, so that, our, so that these kids don't have to be ashamed to say that they're from Brockton and people don't ask them, oh wait, how do you survive there? I wanna make Brockton great for everyone, especially for the upcoming generation. I really hope that you guys do stand with me because I'm not here fighting because 
Well, I'm not here. I'm, I'm 23 years old. I guess we, we, that's one of the ma things that are held against me. I know. I'm inexperienced. I know. I'm mean, like, we can get the elephant out of the room. I probably know less than these guys over here, but I'm saying that I'm willing to fight because I've been a fighter all my life. I Thank fought you. through cancer. I fought through disabilities, okay. and I'm ready to fight to make Brockton a better place for everyone. And I'm not saying I know all the answers. I know I don't know all the answers, but I'm, I, but I'm saying I'm going to put the right people in place that are going to help me, that are going to help the city grow, and I really hope that we don't look at experience. We don't look at the fact that, oh, this person is not known in the community. I'm, I think I, we, need, we just need to look at the fact who's willing to fight and who's honest and who know and who's just okay. standing up. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. It's all right. <laughs> You're doing great. You're passionate. Show that passion. Show that passion. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Darren Court. Two minutes. <laughs> The people of Brockton, almost two years ago, elected you as one of our council at large public servants. However, you barely got into office as council of large before you started campaigning for the office of mayor. What do you say to those people who say you are in such a hurry to govern our city? Talk Good now. Good question. Uh, Preach. Well, as you know, um, day one, I want to focus on this one. Day one, what I will do in my administration, I will reach out to every single city leaders to come at the table to talk about the issues. The number two, I will launch a community policing task force to talk about the issues. Number three, we're going to build relationship not only between the resident and law enforcement, but every civic leaders. Here's what I can tell you. As some of you know that my family brought me in this country after facing one of the most devastating earthquakes in Haiti. When I came here, I could not speak a word of English, but fortunately, because of you, the city of Brockton, especially the Brockton Public Library, you open your arms to welcome me with great attitude and great admiration. I took advantage of the opportunity because I know that this is not something that I can joke with. I went to school, got an education, got a job, and my first job in this country, like I stated before, was boss boy. So with that being said, during that moment, I've been not only showing my willingness to serve and also my capacity to actually understand and also adapt but also to comprehend the complexity of our city. And that's one of the reasons why, when I was in school, I did my best not only to be in school, but also to take responsibility in regard to government. Here's what I can tell you. Eight years ago, you took a chance in me. Two years ago, you took a chance of me. Now, I'm asking you to take a chance of me. Because it take, a chance of me is a chance for our children, it's a chance for public safety, it's a chance for all of us. Because I strongly believe that, together, we have what it takes to move this place to the next level. Together, that's the only way we will govern. Together, we will bring this city not only to the next level, but making sure that when people talk about Brockton, they see greatness, attitude, and together, they will know that we, the city of champion, has been the best out of the best to take this place to the next level. Here's what I can ask you. This selection, folks, is not about me. It's about inspire our young people. It's about inspire the folks who've never believed that okay. this place can be for Thank them. You, it's about giving them an opportunity. You give it to me, I'm fighting for you, and I'm fighting for them. Please join me in this journey and believe in Brockton together. Let's do it. It's time for change. Okay. Regardless, we are doing well, oh. September 17th. Please, I am asking you for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. Thanks. Oh.